Hey everyone, it's Barb, and today we're going to talk about the exclusive Inktober collection box from Art Snacks, and I'll show you all the drawings I did for this challenge using this year's prompt words. Right away you'll notice this box is much bigger than the regular Art Snacks subscription boxes, and that's because there's a whole lot more included. The first item it looks like a nylon travel case, which we'll have a closer look at later. Next, one of two India inks included, and this is a black star, some Zig Mangaka pens, our Inktober sticker, of course the treat, a Copic brush pen, and for the inking purist, there are two items in this bubble wrap. One is a pen and nib, and the last one is a Princeton Sable round brush. The menu card for this box is quite extensive as you can see, and it features on the back side a calendar with all the prompt words you need for Inktober. Now our last item is a special edition Denix sketchbook featuring cover art by Inktober founder Jake Parker. On the inside, there's a special inspirational message from Jake as well. You'll notice my book has blue ink all over it, and that's unfortunately because the Bombay ink that came included in the box leaked in transit. I contacted Artsnext though, and they were really amazing about sending me two new items to replace the damaged ones. So let's have a closer look at the nylon travel case. It's got a really great durable zipper on the side and tons of pockets and storage. You can put every material you could possibly think of and all different shapes and sizes will fit in here. This item was a really nice inclusion, especially if you like to sketch on the go a lot, and it allows you to include all of the supplies in this box in one handy carrying case. The next item is a Copic Gas and Food A brush pen. It was created with East Asian brush painting techniques in mind. You can also use this pen for calligraphy, creating a variety of thick to thin lines in the water-based ink. This set of Kuretake Zig Mangaka pens comes in three sizes and are all black water-based ink. The fine liners include a 0.1 millimeter, a 0.5 millimeter, and lastly a 0.8 millimeter. Next up is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star Matte India Ink. This ink is awesome because it dries completely matte, which means there will be no reflection, and it is a non-clogging formula, so when we use it with this dip pen, it won't clog. The key with any dip pen is you have to dip it right into the ink bottle. It needs to be deep enough so that the nib can perform properly. Although the amount of ink I took out with the eyedropper and put into the well was not enough, I love that it gives you the control to do that if you wanted to use this with a brush. This nib pen allows you to do a variety of different lines. You can do thick to thins, and you could choose to write with it as well if you wanted. Speaking of brushes, let's try the Princeton Series 4050 Heritage Synthetic Sable Round Brush with this ink. The blend of synthetic and sable hair holds the ink really well and comes to a point beautifully. So that was a quick look at how all of these products perform with the exception of the Bombay ink. You'll get a look at how it's represented in the illustrations in the second half of this video. This is my second year doing Inktober, and this year I have to say it was a lot more of a challenge than previously. Um, for one, this type of paper in this sketchbook was really smooth, and I'm used to using a paper that is a little bit more porous, so that actually took a long time to kind of get the hang of for me personally. Um, I almost found it too smooth for my liking, but I definitely just wanted to keep with it and see if I could make it work and figure out how to use it. I also used a lot of products that were in other Art Snacks boxes, not just the ones that came in this particular one. One of the products I used quite regularly throughout these illustrations were Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. They're an India ink-based pen. 
as well as a Molotow liquid chrome pen and a product that's actually become one of my favorites from one of the recent boxes, which are the Zebra Sensations pens. I really love the flexible nibs on those pens and I use them in almost every illustration in this series. From a creative perspective, one thing I really tried to keep in mind with these prompt words was to try and take a different approach to some of the meaning behind these words. And in some cases, I chose something that was maybe a little bit more of a different definition of that word. Or like with the cards that you just saw, that was in reference to having a weak hand as opposed to someone being weak or something that is maybe a more typical representation of that word. I think these prompt word challenges can be really great for pushing you creatively to do something different or to think of something different and find ways to represent things visually that maybe you'd never thought of drawing before or you've never thought about how you would represent that word visually before, which can be really creatively um, valuable in terms of thinking of different projects for the future. I mean, every time I do one of these, I feel like at the end I come out of it with ideas for a new series or an idea for a specific drawing. And I think that that's a really great thing to do for any artist. Overall, this was a really solid special edition box by Art Snacks. If you haven't heard of Inktober, I highly recommend you try it. It's a great creative exercise for any artist. And you can find more information by visiting the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all my social channels at Barb Art, and I'll see you next time.